I'll, I'll start with, uh, with Ahmed uh, at Blackberry and uh, pleasure to, to see you here today, Ahmed. Uh, Good morning. The burning question, I'm sure everybody wants to know right now, Blackberry OS 10, touch versus QWERTY. You made a bold move, you went out with the Z10 first and now the Q10 is hitting the market. How are the numbers looking and what's coming next? Uh, good morning, everyone. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, thank you, Ziad. Uh, let's start differently, right? Okay. Let's start answering the second part of the question, what's okay. coming next. So I suggest, I have a video to show everyone. Rather than speaking, I think just to keep everyone motivated, and can we play the video and then I'll answer? The BlackBerry video, please. Cars This is, this is the future. This is, the future. This, this is a BlackBerry solution. QNX is a BlackBerry solution. True. QNX is the platform that's running BlackBerry 10. This is where we're heading. This is what we're looking at. This is the future that we're looking at. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm not here to promise uh, flying cars uh, and human teleportation machines like in Star Trek, but we're getting there. So will we see QNX? Uh started in cars, moved into the mobile, we're going to hopefully see developing in cars and in other devices as well? Is that the future that you are looking It's at? the mobile computing. So we, we, you know, when we introduced 10 years ago the BlackBerry and the instant messaging and the push email, we changed the way people communicate. But we think that now the game is changing and we are taking a new direction. Uh, we're, we're, we're launching, we're leading the game into the mobile computing and we are talking about, you know, using your smartphone to connect to social media, social networking, WhatsApp, YouTube, uh, BBM, is what you are doing today, but what's next, what's the next step? And we're looking at how to connect machine to machines. It's the mobile computing where your smartphone will connect to everything that matters to you in your daily life, in your daily routine. So in the future, the washing machine will send me a BBM that it's ready, it's done. Oh. It's ready, it's done. Very good, nice, nice. Uh, Sebastian, you're a, you're a great channel at Integral for all the technologies that, uh, that we invent, and you're the last mile before the end user, uh, basically. How, how, how do you see mobile taking uh, over your world, because you represent both fixed and mobile operators? I, I guess if we if we look at uh, the world of, of operating system, you know, and the world we live in is, uh, I think operators, you know, have a role in the regions uh, to really uh, support, uh, you know, all the developers, all the application creators, you know, to really 
get them the level of uh, the, the level of support, the, all the tools to really be able to leverage all the new platform and all the capabilities. And I, I just want to to cover one important point, you know, which is key in uh, all uh, all new uh, platforms is uh, monetization. Uh, at least if we look at you know Middle East is uh, really operators you know can help by enabling carry billing in all the OEMs to really get you know people to buy content on their on their invoices and this is something that will give you know more opportunities to create content uh, to buy you know premium uh, uh, premium rights you know to because the monetization will be there that's one of the one of the challenge we see today in the in the market grant welcome welcome to the region as well uh, Google, you know, changed, relatively speaking, the, the mobile landscape with the introduction of Android, but Google and mobile is much more than Android, probably, right? So what do you want to tell us about things like Google Now, Google Glass, and the other innovations that Google is doing in mobile space? Thank you. And, and you're right. To, to us, mobile is, is many, many things. Um, my perspective is uh, we, we're in a world where We've, we've seen uh, approaching possibly over a billion device activations, and we're thinking about what the next billion devices might be. Um, you've seen that with, with Google Glass. Um, I was in the line to get a pair myself, but I'm in the line behind all of you, so I have to wait just like all of you. Maybe... maybe uh... that, that was one host next request. <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> That's okay, but we're, we see, for instance, uh, uh, in the broader mobile space, we see half of our searches um, about location, about maps, about where people are. Um, and we think about what does that mean in terms of the kinds of services that you as either developers or content providers um, could offer this vast number of people who, who are actually out there telling you they're interested in where they are, what's around them, location-based services and, and things like that. Um, we're seeing um, people who start and transition uh, work between types of devices, maybe a touch screen here, maybe a phone there, laptop here, a Chromebook over there. Um, up to two thirds of the people who move between a device will continue with a search that they started earlier on an earlier device. Uh, that's leading us into thinking, well, what if you've got the device with you all the time? What if the devices know enough about what you were doing previously that they could help you uh, save those steps and uh, just seamlessly move into the logical next step that you had in mind as you transition between devices. So, uh, yeah, both the physical uh, aspect of the device itself as well as what users want to do with the device is kind of guiding our thinking. It's quite impressive to see Google Now, and I'm not sure if it's officially available here in the region or not, so stop me if you, if you want or if you can. But also we're seeing Google Now spreading beyond Android as well now. It's available on other platforms. Uh, is this the new... Uh, Google strategy, is this going to be the new Google Plus or the new central focus of all Google things? So yes, I saw uh, the, the iOS version myself uh, of Google Now. It's, it's a fantastic bit of technology and, and uh, I think it, it sort of illustrates what you can do when you, you get out of the way of what the user wants to achieve and try and make the mobile experience as intuitive and easy to use as possible. Uh, uh, I'm certain you know, BlackBerry has this in mind as well. Is, is that what if there, there's some percentage of users who don't care about keyboards? There are some people who don't want to type their search. They've just thought of something. They want to act on what they've just thought. Um, and for us, uh, I think we're only just seeing the beginning of that. I think uh, Google now could move into who knows what gestures. Um, maybe you know, here I am just thinking off the top of my head. Uh, be aware of what cologne you're wearing, and maybe make some suggestions made on that. Who knows? That's the fifth sense that's still missing to the mobile exactly. devices. And, uh, and smell as well. The, the yeah. smell sense smell, is exactly. yeah. Let that me your, uh, take a pause for a second and see if there are any burning questions from the people here. Any questions for Google, Integral, or BlackBerry that we'd like to share before I unleash Ziad again <laughs> with his burning questions. Okay, we have a question in the back one more time. The animator, correct? There you go. Yes, animator and now uh, 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 app developer. So um, we were wondering for the Google Glasses, um, is it something that uh, we can develop uh, easy? Is it open source almost? Um, uh, or we can use stuff like you know, Unity's, Qualcomm, Mateo's, and other things. 
uh, that we can create content for the Google Glasses, or will they have their own platform to create apps and games and stuff like that for it? Okay, so if I understand the question, it's will Google Glass provide the same sorts of developer capabilities, or will they will it have its own developer tool set and, and approach to development? Um, thank you for a developer question. I'm, I'm a developer at heart. Uh, I'm going to leave all the wonderful market questions and so forth to my esteemed uh, co-speakers up here. But um, just in the last two weeks, we, uh, we made some announcements that um, Glass is obviously running Android. Um, that has some implications about what you can expect from developer tools, um, developer capabilities. Um, and we've already seen uh, some announcements of, of people uh, taking the hardware and doing other things with it. Um, and it's uh, a statement I believe we made last week that, of course, we expected people to take Glass and imagine their own future for it. Um, on the gaming front, I'd love, personally, I'd love to see um, someone take that idea and run with it. Um, some of you might be familiar with the, the game Ingress that Google released. Um, oh, I, I'm not going to guess at the date because I forgot. Uh, months, if not a year or so ago. Um, and to me, uh, that was a, a fantastic example of using the device, your environment, uh, a bunch of useful information and so forth to make a really compelling game experience. Um, if you take that up to the next level where you don't have to be looking at a device in your hand, but it's, it's a wearable game, um, I'll, I'll buy it as soon as you make it. <laughs> All right, and I believe we have a question in the gentleman third row. Thanks very much. Question for you, Grant. How do you foster innovation at, at Google? How many cool projects are there happening that we don't know about? Because everybody's talking about Google Glass, but I'm sure you're having way much, for, uh, way much more fun than that. Right. So how do we foster innovation at Google, and what are all the secret projects that I can tell you about right now? Uh, well, I can, I can let you down on the second part of that question straight away, that uh, it, it's a big enough company. Uh, I, I could tell you what I'm allowed to tell you and still not know 99% of what's going on. There, there are so many things going on. I think to answer the first part of your question, how we foster innovation, um, I'm going to hark back to something that one of the previous speakers, I think it was Mark, mentioned about embracing notions like failing fast, learning from your mistakes, and so forth. Uh, at Google, we, I, I'd say it's, it's a case of every team and every individual contributor at Google is, is tasked with and embraces the notion of being uh, an innovator in their own right. Uh, we have, as you'd expect, um, uh, encouragement and support for innovation, programs, uh, all sorts of things to, um, to foster it. But at the end of the day, all of the development teams working on all of the public projects that you see, as well as all of the, the new cool things like Glass, every single one of those teams is considered an innovative team in their own space. Um, and I think. Uh, that's, that's a pretty powerful thing that we, we keep going in the, in the corporate culture, even at, at our level where, you know, day to day we're yeah. looking at something that might not look so great, might not be the shiniest new interface or device that you, you might see, but to, to us in our particular domain, that, that might be the coolest thing to be working on and we're free to innovate wherever we like. Um, I think it's, it's culture. I just want to comment on, uh, on innovation because uh, at least the way we look at innovation uh, you know, from, from our perspective is everything starts with the end user. Everything starts with you know, uh, in what type of context is. You know, on, uh, on, on when we are developing uh, multi-screen experiences, you know, what we, we see is we really see different, completely different usage patterns you know, depending on the, on the platforms the, the user is interacting with. I mean, we, we just launched recently, uh, you know, the, the Saudi Professional uh, League application. You know, with all the all the football match, you know, live replays, you know, that you can access on the web, you can access on uh, Android, on uh, on iOS, and we see very different usage. Uh, we see that people have uh, they can stay on the website 40 minutes watching the, the match, while they will be much more into a snacking mode on a smartphone on a longer period on on, on tablet. So it's really about adapting. You know, what type of uh, Devices are consumer used, you know, are, are, are interacted with, you know, while, while you are developing your your experience on how you follow the user across his journeys, you know, when he's, he moves from the main smart TV screens down to the tablets, down to the to the smartphones. Fantastic. Do we have any other questions for the audience? 
All right. Well, I believe we started talking about the, uh, the new BlackBerry 10, the Z and the Q, and then we saw the video, but we didn't have a chance to talk about the new devices. So maybe we can switch back to that. Ahmed? Yes, uh, it's true. We, we've launched our uh, new BlackBerry 10 platform back in January, on 30th January this year. And then the first BlackBerry 10 smartphone, that was the Z10, and we just released the Q10 here in the UAE. Um, back to the discussion, we, the way we innovated, the way we came with this BlackBerry 10 platform was very simple. We just listened to people, and we, we went out and we did the survey, right? And we asked everyone, what, what do you like about your smartphone? What do you hate about your smartphone? What frustrates you? And that was a survey across all platform or users, uh, whether it's BlackBerry or non-BlackBerry. Uh, and we started gathering this input and listened to people. We changed the way the company do business, right? And this is to answer your first question, Ziad. Uh, we re-innovated the company. We, we, we redesigned everything, and we listened, and we took this survey. We came out with BlackBerry 10, a platform that just keeps you moving, a platform that brings everything to you and adapts to your needs. This is the way we're addressing the future. And the next step for us, this was the first step into the mobile computing. Again, I'm just repeating again. But it's, it's very important to really make it clear that the smartphone era is just about to change, and we're heading into a totally new game here. It's no more about connecting to Facebook and Twitter. We, we, we have seen in BlackBerry 10 certain you know, directions forming, like your focus on the, uh, on the camera, for instance, and certain aspects. But yet, you're, you're putting all your effort on top of BlackBerry 10, whereas if we listen to Grant, we see that some things work well on Android, but also on Chrome and on, on other platforms. And this is a difficult question, I know, but will we see BlackBerry services running on non-BlackBerry platform, like BBM, like your camera, etc.? <laughs> we haven't announced anything yet. We haven't, sorry. we haven't announced anything yet. It's we just enough. announced, we started our BlackBerry 10 platform. We announced it, and we're just launching our new BlackBerry 10 devices. But really, the, the, the future, and uh, it's up to the imagination. We, we're running on QNX, and I showed you the video. The, the QNX today, you can see it in everywhere around you. Do you know that, for example, Facebook and Twitter, right, their routers running your traffic are using QNX platform? 70% of the cars today are running QNX platform. The trains, the NASA, the nuclear uh, machines, they're all based on QNX. So, so really, the future and what we can do with this QNX is limitless. Sebastian, I, I want to pick your brain on, on the discussion here that we're having. But you know, we're talking operating systems. This is the OS showcase. But a new buzzword that I heard a few weeks ago was, this is now the operating system age, when Facebook takes over the whole phone with Facebook Home and sits on top and even manages your SMS traffic, your interaction with other people, even what apps you see first when you launch the phone. Uh, this could be a great opportunity for, uh, for Integral when you're creating you know, the services related to the, the user being the fast, first mile, as we, as we said, and concentrating these services around the world of, of Integral or, or your own brands in each market, and then funneling them from there into the different platforms. Are you working on something like this? What do you think of it? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I guess this is really, uh, you know, the, I, I think the, what, you know, this new operating system, uh, you know, these new platforms bring is that they, they really bring they make you know some existing technologies you know very uh, you know uh, a challenge you know when we look at uh, WhatsApp and we we look at now that you know uh, in terms of volume of messages there is more messages exchange you know on, on social messaging OTT platform than on, on SMS you know and we see that operators you know are really attacked on their core business and they need to to react you know this is something that is uh, changing and, and we see on we are a bit in the middle, you know, uh, on the side of the developers, on the side of the onset manufacturers, and also in the world of operators. And, and this is where we see two industries sometimes fighting. Like, you know, uh, you have all operators, you know, uh, looking at uh, uh, RCS, you know, rich communication services, trying to, or operators like Telefonica launching their own uh, uh, WhatsApp version called To Me. You know, they, they, they are trying to copycat, you know, the type of OTT innovation that arrive on that impose itself to, uh, to millions, to uh, hundreds of millions of people across 
uh, across uh, operating systems. So this is, I, I think, really a challenge. And, and at least, yeah, back to, to what we said earlier, everything is about the user. And at least we see with the level of analytics you can put into apps, you know, with uh, Flurry, with Apani. I mean, you know, it's everything about uh, sniffing, listening to what the end users, you know. And, and we are fortunate is in, uh, in this part of the world, pe people are so enthusiastic and they are so reactive and they really comment a lot whenever you bring an application. They, if you start to listen to your end users, this is really how you can really develop. You know, a, a success is not something that you build from day one. It's something that you really do incrementally on you, by bringing new and new versions that will really you know, solve and, and answer you know, all your end users' questions. Do we have any questions? For any of our three speakers, I don't know if you can see me, I'll stand in the light. Any questions before we move back to Ziad? Going once, twice, and Ziad, back to you. Grant, you're a developer, as you said, and you've even written books for developers on how to develop. And question here that you know, I've heard a little bit uh, talking to developers and development companies in the market, how do you advise that, that we build a good developer individual developer ecosystem here in the region, but also manage to keep them. But we have seen in certain cases where a couple of star developers are so good that they are automatically poached and you know, they're working in Europe or in the US the, the next week. What do you recommend to the companies that are here in the region, startups uh, or bigger even, uh, small medium enterprises that are getting developers uh, into their workforce, how to retain them? What is the developer asking for, basically? That's uh, a fantastic topic, one that I've, I've been asked several times, so I'm going to try and not rehash my old answers to this one, but uh, stop me if you've heard part of this before. I, I think particularly in, in, in this part of the world, where uh, mimicking what Sebastian just commented on, it's so dynamic that the embrace of new ideas, new services, new ways of working it just happens so fast here. Um, I can Personally, I can see the attraction of saying, wow, I've, I've succeeded here, now I'm going to go to a bigger market. I think what um, SMEs and startups and, and entrepreneurs in this region um, can do to help themselves and to help the talent that they want to foster in this region is to recognize firstly the fantastic resources that are available globally at the, the click of a mouse that you don't physically have to transport yourself anywhere to get access to some of the best design input um, the, the best information about what users are after and not just users in the region but users in any market around the world um, it, it truly is a, a global platform that you're opening yourself up to. Uh, I'll use Android because it's the platform I know the most about, but you, know, you don't have to leave UAE to work in 146 different languages if that's what you want to do. That, that capability is baked into the platform. Um, something I've seen succeed in other regions, so I was in uh, Brunei, Dar es Salaam, about three years ago, uh, answering pretty much exactly this question. What could they had a, a fantastic developer ecosystem there? But as soon as anyone became successful, they'd immediately want to go to Singapore or then Europe or the US or whatever. And um, what we did was work with, with some of the incubators and some of the groups there to show them what existed in the region around them. Often, some SMEs aren't even aware that there are support groups, um, like-minded entrepreneurs and individuals who are working in the same space in a, in a non-competitive fashion that can provide fantastic support and also demonstrate to your your uh, co-founders, your co-workers and so forth, that there's scope to expand in the region, there's scope to be fabulously successful in business, have a career, whatever, whatever it is you're looking for in the mobile space. Um, the, uh, I think the one number I can remember from, from UAE and, and the wider Middle Eastern region is we helped something like 12,000 entrepreneurs in the last two years in the Google developer groups alone. Um, if there are 12,000 people just like you out there, just in this region, uh, I think that says you could find a great deal of success right here without having to leave your, your current location. Actually, I was talking to uh, Nat from uh, Terrapin the other day, and it's amazing. The show is three years old, and the first time it ran, there were hardly any developers. And uh, in fact, we had to kind of offer them the passes uh, to come. 
And uh, today, Matt is telling me that most of the exhibition floor outside is actually paid for by development companies who have set up shop in the country in the last three years or in the region and are now actually making such a show possible. You know. Sebastian, you come from the, media, uh, from the media industry, right? You've worked with Fox before. And uh, there's a very interesting relationship uh, between content providers always and service providers. Uh, what is Integral doing differently to enable us to get more and more interesting content and also having it affordable and legal at the same time? I guess what uh, yeah we are we are working on on three you know environment we have uh, we are running IPTV on OTT uh, operations so here we are really licensing you know all the Hollywood studios you know and all the local uh, TV producers you know uh, in the regions uh, we are on web and we are on mobile and at least what uh, what we see is more and more you know we try to engage with content providers across platforms. Uh, we use web as a, as a discovery platform you know to really uh, get. Uh, the audience to get the engagement and then to be able to upsell into premium services. And if we look at uh, you know the, the work we do with content providers, with service providers, it's everything is about enabling the ecosystem to grow. You know, bringing them the tools to really make it. You know, uh, and we are launching, for example, uh, uh, application builder. You know, an application framework that developers can use. And, and there are so many entrepreneurs, companies that are not so, you know, they are not developers, so they, they need to plug into some very easy framework to bring an application, or it's the same with uh, a mobile internet site builder, you know, that really for where you bring, you know, down application at, at a level where you, you can be completely uh, developer agnostic and you are still able to, to bring something. And for us, it's, it's really about working on the scale, on working on enabling the tools, you know, and, and for all this ecosystem to grow and to find a way to, uh, to, to monetize, so. Touch QWERTY, we spoke. Tablet is missing in the picture today. Uh, I almost for a second thought it was a tablet that was broken in that video, actually, so I had hope. But what, what, what is the plan? What, what can we see soon? Stay tuned. Uh, we're just starting. We launched a brand new platform, and uh, the focus is on getting this platform out to the right people and really address the challenges that we had and really tell everyone that BlackBerry has changed. BlackBerry is here with a re-engineered and redesigned platform. And you know, talking about HTML5, we, we know that our old browser wasn't very good, right? But today, uh, on our BlackBerry 10, on the Z10, we are scoring very, very high on HTML5 because everyone was talking about HTML5. And I think we're out, we're even ahead of Chrome in, in, on our BlackBerry 10 browser uh, uh, and HTML, uh, HTML5 performance. So what I want to say here is we're, we're into this new game. Uh, the feedback was amazing. Uh, the Q10 launch was just last week, and really we were making sure that the Middle East is always up to speed and aligned with our global launch. As a matter of fact, um, and, uh, Qatar was the third in the world to launch Z10 two months ago, right? And then Kuwait was number uh, four or five. So, and here UAE is just uh, a couple of days after Canada for the Q10. So, th this is a very important region for us, and we see th this is home to early adopters and the feedback we have been receiving on the Z10 and now on the Q10 was really amazing. Uh, th this region is always ahead in the game. Uh, you know, I, I bet there are more than 20 nationalities here in the room, right? Connected to 20 or 30 countries where everyone needs to connect back home and just communicate. And so, so this region is relevant to us, to our global business, and we're just making sure that we're always on time, aligned with our global launches, and we're just offering everyone a solution to communicate and to keep up with their families. And BlackBerry and, and operators, and uh, Sebastian, you're going to have the task of representing all operators today. Uh, it's a great relationship, you know, throughout the ages. Actually, it's probably the first in the region when we saw a tie-up between a handset or a smart device and, and the mobile operators. Yet both your business models are being attacked with the, through the OTT players. And, uh, you know, we, we see WhatsApp and similar services coming in cannibalizing both your SMS traffic, your BBM traffic. BBM cannibalized probably SMS for a while. Uh, what are you guys doing together to counter uh, this and, 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 and you know, to, to keep your position in this ecosystem and your revenues? 
I, I guess what we, we see more and more is, uh, you know, to the opposite of uh, Europe or US, you know, where uh, sometimes the, the device was subsidized, you know, by the operators, we see more and more, you know, integrated package, uh, and we see that uh, operators like, uh, yeah, I mean, when we look at uh, Saudi or when we look at Dubai, they are really using the device, you know, uh, and there is a, a real battle to get, you know, uh, we'll get the, the S4, we'll get the Q10, you know, uh, and, and it's really about, you know, we'll get the exclusivity, the volume, uh, and at least what we are working on is really to, to, to work on, on putting bundles uh, directly also with, uh, with devices, you know, and, uh, and, and back to, to your, your previous question on media is, you know, it's, it's also, uh, yeah, one of the, one of the opportunities we see is, is really to, to engage with the TV channels, you know, to bring uh, new formats and to even work with, you know, the advertisers, you know, uh, in, in, com in combine, you know, app-based advertising format on TV-based format. And this is really where, you know, the, the media and when you look at, uh, you know, a media group like NBC, you know, with their audience, they are more and more using, you know, their, their programs, you know, with this mobile and these uh, tablets and smartphone, uh, smartphone interactions. Thank you, Sebastian. Uh, uh, Ziad, just a comment. Uh, you know, operators and relationship with carrier is, is a key fundamental element in our business model. And th this is for a simple reason. Operators and carriers, they deal with end user. And the most important in this, in the whole this industry is the end user, right? And we need to understand the end user. And so we need to work very closely with the operator who really communicates with the end user. It's, it's, it's more than you know launching a campaign for a new device or uh, about the volumes or it's it's uh, about this it's how do we offer the customer a unique experience right to make it much easier for him to do things in his life one of those elements is the carrier billing that we're working on with so many uh, carriers where you don't need to use your credit card every time you want to buy a zero ninety nine dollars uh, application right you just click pay on my bill and then it's just added to your uh, mobile invoice so it's how you take this mobile and smartphone experience to the next level above and then beyond going into just Facebook and Twitter and BBM and WhatsApp very good uh, the last question for Grant they have a last yeah, question please, please go ahead audience. please yeah. go ahead Grant your, 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 your first Android application I was reading your bio was a task list to remind you to finish all the other unfinished Android projects. So tapping onto a question that was from the audience earlier, just looking at your own projects, what is the hottest unfinished Android project that you are currently working on? Okay, what's the hottest unfinished Android project I'm currently working on? Um, so th this is entirely out of personal interest. I, um, uh, I, I love food. You can probably tell that I, I eat whenever I get the chance. Um, and wherever I travel, uh, I love to experience new things. So I have a, um, uh, an unfinished app, like all of my apps, they're unfinished. Well, they're all in need of like the next enhancement. I need to ask my users what they need. Um, and and this, uh, this is literally an app to remind myself of what I've eaten around the world, what it looked like, and I'm, I'm desperately looking for an, uh, a device that can recreate the aroma of my meal. So I'm after that fifth sense. Um, uh, so Google still... smell was not first uh, of April joke at the, at the end. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Just a quick comment on this. On uh, you know, is I was I, I, I saw a very interesting application. You know that uh, has been used in some markets where people are really taking pictures. You know, on, on raising awareness of what they are eating. You know, on, on how they are eating, how long they are eating. You know, if they finish their plates. You know, so there are, there is an application that will really guide. The users to, to really make him aware of the way he's eating. On, on the, most of the people that have been using this app have been losing weight, you know, so they are definitely, uh, you know, we see a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of interesting new usage, you know, that uh, are, are done by developers. Yes, I've, I've seen an app that is very similar to that. It uses the, the microphone on the, on the handset and detects the sound of cutlery, whether it's a knife and fork, whether it's chopsticks, um, and tells you to slow down if you're eating too quickly just by detecting the sound of the cutlery. Interesting stuff. One last time, I would like to ask the audience if you have any question for Integral, Google, or BlackBerry, or even Ziad, they're here for you to ask. So if you have any questions, there you go. I'll jump off the stage. There you go. 
question for Grant. Uh, what will be the role of, role of uh, Google Glass in the financial sector, especially on mobile banking space? Sorry, could, could you repeat that? I couldn't quite hear. What will be the role of Google Glass in the financial sector, especially in mobile banking space? Right, the role of Google Glass in the financial sector. Is yes, that... and the mobile banking as well. Oh, and mobile banking. So that's a, that's a really good question. I, I, I'd imagine, and, uh, and now I'm, I'm just uh, thinking of things off the top of my head, obviously, uh, being an Android-based platform, think about all of the mobile banking apps and so forth that you have right now. Um, some of the features that, that we've demoed with Google Glass are things like uh, eye-based gesturing, blinking to take a picture, and, and so forth. I could, uh, I could foresee a future where paying the bill in a restaurant could be as simple as looking at the bill in Google Glass and, you know, one blink for yes, two blinks for add a, add a service fee or something like that. Um, I think I'd turn it around. I'd, I'd ask you, the audience, if you had that device and the ease of development that, that Google's developer tools gives you, how are you going to radically change mobile payments with a, a pervasive wearable mobile device? Um, I look, I'd look forward to testing whatever it is you came up with. We all do. Do we have any other questions? Well, maybe to our speakers, is there anything you would like to say towards the end of this OS session? Sebastian? No, for, for me, I have, a, I have a question for my two neighbors. You know, is uh, back to the operating system. I mean, we see uh, a lot of new OS that are uh, arriving, you know, like uh, Tizen, Ubuntu, you know, Firefox. So, I wanted to get your view. I mean, Android has 70% of the smartphone uh, you know, market. How do you see the emergence of this new operating system on, on what are the, the challenges you see that they, they will need to overcome to really um, you know, find a, a real share on this market? OK. Um, I think, in general, my perspective, and, and that of, I think, Google at large, is uh, competition is a good thing. Uh, competition helps us find out what our users want. Um, through them directly telling us, through what we see them doing, um, the choices that they're making in terms of platform, games, apps, you name it. Um, so it's, it's the kind of thing that, that spurs us on. Um, there's, a, a, I suppose, a different perspective being not just a, an Android company. Um, we see that, that whenever there's more uptake of online services, Google benefits. So. In that respect, if people do more searches, if people are interested in uh, you know, more mapping data, I used that, that mobile search example at the beginning, um, that's something that, that we'd see in Embrace. So uh, we'd, we'd see it broadly as a, as a positive. Competition is good for everyone. Absolutely. Uh, competition drives innovation, right? And as I said, when we first, 10 years ago, launched the BlackBerry, we changed this, we created this push email, and then Google came and iOS came, and they, they've done a great job, right? And now we are challenging them again with the BlackBerry 10, which says we're ahead of the game, and let's let's compete, let's create the innovation, let's innovate to, to end user. And a last message, and especially for Ziad, who was asking me very curious questions. Um, today we're. Um, the, the, it's, um, we're uh, kicking off our biggest event of the year. It's called BlackBerry Live in Orlando in America. There will be some very interesting announcement from our CEO, so stay tuned. You're curious. Uh, it's going to happen in a couple of hours. Uh, my questions will be answered eventually. Yes, they will be. Your curious questions will be answered. Any other last words from our speakers? I think we are all set. So please, a round of applause from Google, Technology Director and Principal Architect, Grant Allen. From Integral, Vice President of Mobile, Web and Advertising, Sebastian Martou. And from Blackberry, Country Director, Ahmed Olaywan. Thank you so much. Give them a round of applause as they go back to their seats. Thank you so much.